They are saying almost every human being has uh, about enough plastic in them to manufacture a… like a credit card. The many problems that uh, children are facing today, young children having uh, thyroid problems, is largely connected with this. Plus, autism, various things are associated with this. How many problems you're getting out of this, you do not know. So, Sadhguru, majority of your work is towards sustainable solutions, but also a lot of your work is to raise human consciousness. What role can an individual or small businesses, communities, societies can play? See, these are not two different things. Human beings living consciously and sustainable solutions are not two different things. The only reason why we are doing things in ways that it is not sustainable is because we are not conscious. We are not doing our activity on this planet in a conscious manner. Everybody has their compulsions. Individual people have compulsions, societies have compulsions, nations have compulsions. The global reality has its compulsions. To fulfill these compulsions, we are doing things which are taking away the basis of our existence. This is like a classic uh, story from the Panchatantra, where a man is sitting at the wrong end of the branch and cutting it. He is going at it because he wants to be successful. But when he succeeds, he will fall. That's where we are. We are doing this kind of silly activity. When we succeed, we will fall. Right. Every one of us should structure our lives in such a way, what are we using today? Where will this go? This much consciousness. Whatever I'm using today, where will this go tomorrow? Where will it end up? What is its ultimate goal? Now, one important thing is, in India, as a nation, we have been a textile nation for hundreds of years or thousands of years. There was a time when we clothed entire Europe and Arabia. Literally sixty percent of the clothing was from India. Nobody made exquisite clothing like this on the planet, even today. Nobody can make something like what you're wearing, all right? Right. Nowhere else on the planet. Because the skills... These skills won't happen overnight. This is not something you can go to a textile course for four years and pick it up. This is something innately developed. In each region, they had all these different kinds of weaves, different kinds of dyes. With whatever local material, they came out with such exquisite weaves. Over 132 weaves, distinct weaves were there at the beginning of this century. Right now, almost sixty-five to seventy of them are near extinction. We are making some efforts in that, we'll talk about it later. But textile has been our way of doing things. We need to go back to that. This has been disturbed essentially during the British era, when they wanted to systematically break the Indian textile strength, because they wanted to build Manchester, which they successfully did, okay? Now, people are very proud uh, to call Coimbatore the Manchester of India. I said, please don't do that, huh? Let them call Manchester Coimbatore of England. <laughs> because this is where the real weaving and spinning and everything, the cotton was, all right, textiles. This is the region in which it happened. And in every region, there are unique ways. If we bring this back, even in reasonable context, if we develop the needed markets, if we revive the skills that are there, I'm telling you, in this country, easily it will employ anywhere between two hundred to three hundred million people within the next five to six years' time. Some efforts are being made by the textile industry, many policies have changed, we have also been working with them. But it's not enough if you want a revolution. Above all, for all this you need a market. That's why you are very important, that's one reason I'm talking to you. Because <laughs> we need a market. Market should be sensitive to aesthetics. Market should be sensitive to sustainability. Right now, they want to go to some shop and buy ten nylon clothes. If they go shopping, nobody's buying one. Because they buy two dozen like this, 
One, two, three, they'll wear, after that it's got bored, and again by the time they can wear these two dozen, already they've shopped once again, all right? Eighty-five percent of the clothing on the planet, within one year, goes to the landfills. Hundred billion pieces of clothing is sold on the planet every year, hundred billion, all right? And eighty-five billion pieces of clothing go into the landfills every year and most of it is polyester. The one of the most dangerous form of pollution is polyfiber is floating everywhere. It's in the air, it's in the soil, it's in the water. Some researchers have found placenta, you know, the... the polyfiber is in the placenta, that in your mother's womb, you catch it. Some of them are saying, we don't know how to what extent these numbers are correct, but it is right... it's in the right direction. They are saying almost every human being has uh, about enough plastic in them to manufacture a... like a credit card. You know, you have to pay <laughs> someday <laughs> you, if you carry a credit card in your system, you keep paying, all right? So, this much plastic is all over the place, but everybody is trying to shoot the lowly uh, plastic bag. I'm not saying you shouldn't shoot at it, but it's fashionable to do that. That's what is problem. Because the lowly f plastic bag which is floating on the street, uh, some beggar, some rag picker picks it up and you know, in India, that recycling is actually at a very good pace, not because of your uh, sustainable consciousness, because of poverty, they're picking it out. Plastic bottles are recycled nearly ninety percent in India, it's the only country like that. This is not because we are very ecologically aware, simply because people are poor and they're picking out all the bottles. Anyway, one way or the other, it's happening. But the polyfiber, the amount of damage it's causing, the way it enters the body, especially children, uh, are wearing polyfiber because polyfiber is very, uh, you know, flammable. Because of that, they are coating it with, uh, uh, you know, fire-resistant chemicals. These chemicals have been found to be carcinogenic. The many problems that uh, children are facing today, young children having uh, thyroid problems is largely connected with this uh, non-flammable chemicals that they are using on the uh, uh, clothes. Plus, autism, various things are associated with this. How many problems you're getting out of this, you do not know, but for sure, many, many problems are coming your way. A child till fifteen, sixteen years of age should never wear anything polyfiber they must wear organic clothing. Not that adults can, but at least you're more resistant to those things beyond uh, seventeen, eighteen years of age. But till then, it is very important you must wear organic fiber. But now the problem is, how many clothes do you have? And you can't do that with cotton or silk or something, so you end up buying poly-poly, okay? It's cheaper, so a lot... A lot of them are going for... See, even cotton and other things can be made cheaper if we increase the volume. So one simple thing that I'm suggesting is, you have influence in Telangana, you must push for this, I'm pushing for this in some states, that at least the school uniforms must be cotton or uh, linen or whatever they can afford, all right? but it should not be polyfiber. You cannot recycle, only one percent is being recycled because nobody uses uh, this polyfiber just as it is. It is always mixed in a complex mix to get various textures and whatever. So you can never recycle that complex material. If it was just pure nylon or pure polyfiber, we could have recycled it. You cannot recycle it because it's mixed with various other things, so recycling is not possible. Only one percent of the polyfiber that you're using in terms of clothing is being recycled. Rest is just going into nature. And it's coming back to us in so many different ways. A credit card in your heart <laughs>